Hi guys, it's me, the Bee from Super Marcy Super Network, and I come to you yet again with yet another movie review. Now, uh, before I continue any further, rest assured I fully intend on further reviewing my favourite Disney films, but I just wanted to discuss with you a film I saw last night, and that was Rob Zombie's 31. Rob Zombie is a very polarising film director, to say the least, especially when it comes to the horror crowd. But I'm not going to waste this video talking to you about you know what he does wrong what he does right and that sort of stuff because chances are you've probably heard it and you've probably heard it from better people no I'm just going to talk about the movie itself and you know my thoughts on it so here we go uh, so the very basic synopsis for 31 is this so a bunch of uh, carnival workers so I don't I didn't really see any sort of carnival with them. Uh, some carnival, carnival workers are abducted by a bunch of degenerate secos, and they're basically tossed into a game, or sorry, a game, of which uh, the, these secos make these people run around for a set number of hours and, you know, try to survive a bunch of uh, people. Uh, by people, I mean a bunch of uh, equal psychos, and all of them, for some reason, are dressed up like clowns. And uh, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's like I said, it's a Rob Zombie film. And when it comes to the, the movies he has made in the past, like generally speaking, um, it has a very particular vibe to it. And that vibe is usually one of uh, being crass and filthy and disgusting. So automatically this will tell you that 31 is not supposed to be taken as high class or it should be taken seriously at all. No. If, if you go into this film expecting greatness, you're going to leave exceptionally disappointed. But if you are into that sort of film, if you enjoy the, uh, the theatre of extremity, I feel 31 may just be your may just be your, your dish, but let's just discuss a little bit further about this film. So Here's its uh, its downfalls first. The characters are not characters; they're a bunch of ciphers. With the exception of uh, Sherry Moon Zombie and another actor who plays like one of the psychos, who I will mention a little bit later, there's really no one in this film who makes a truly lasting impact. Well, actually, I tell a lie. Meg Foster, who appears in this film as yet another, uh, you know, one of the carnival workers, she. She's tough. She is tough as shit. And, and may I just say, Meg, you are built like a brick shit house. My God, lady, your arms are just... Mm, I, I love them. But with the exception of uh, these these three lead actors and with Malcolm McDowell, of course. Malcolm McDowell plays like the uh, the uh, the head honcho of this uh, this this cult, as it were. That this cult that you know abducts random people and places them into this you know, most deadly game sort of situation. Um, there's nobody else in this film which truly leaves an impact. And, uh, you know, be it the, uh, the the psychos or the people who've been kidnapped, you know, you really don't care. When they die, it's like, whatever. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, apart from the total lack of, uh, you know, good taste of political correctness, uh, it's this film is all about the excess. Um, there's no sort of there's nothing that's really being left to the imagination in this film, and it takes a particular audience in order to enjoy it. As I mentioned before, this film is not going to impress everybody at all. And I do have to applaud Rob Zombie for, you know, sort of going his own way. And, uh... He, the, the man himself has garnered quite a lot of controversy as time has gone on, and I'm not I'm not going to go into that because I'm the last person who should who should be discussing this sort of thing. But I I do praise Zombie for going out there and doing what he wants to do with, for the most part, minimal interference from studios. You don't get a lot of uh, you don't get a lot of directors who sort of are brave enough to flip the, the flip the bird at a uh, you know big studio executives and just do what they want to do. Now obviously this film had to be toned down a little bit just to go past the MPAA. MPAA? That's how you pronounce it. And uh, you can you can somewhat see it, like you can somewhat see, you know, where some of the the um uh, the cuts happened, but for the most part, 31 is a pretty brutal movie. It's it's really no different from, say, I don't know, House of a Thousand Corpses or The Devil's Rejects. Um, so, if, if you like the red stuff, if you really, really, really like the red stuff, 31 is certainly the sort of film that you'll get yourself uh, sort of 
get yourself happy with. And I, I gotta say, the makeup in this film is very impressive. I give credit where credit is due. And it takes a lot of uh, time and energy to make some truly convincing, uh, you know, blood and vis viscera. So, uh, you know, well done to the people who worked on that. But anyhow, um, it's, it's pretty much as you would expect. Your mileage will inevitably vary when it comes to anything Rob Zombie, but let's get to the really, really good part. I am talking about the character of Doomhead, played by the Night's King, aka Joe Chill, Richard Brake. Oh. My. God. You know what? If, if only the, the, the makers of Suicide Squad watched this film, you know, before they even thought about going into production, and, and saw Richard Brake as Doomhead, who pretty much is the Joker in this film. He out-jokered the Joker, man, and uh, it, it, the, the very s first sequence of the movie has him delivering a monologue to the camera, and just... Oh my god, it, Richard Brake has a very distinct and very impressive face, I might add. He has these, he has this very sort of sharp facial structure, and when it is like painted with the, the, the white makeup that Doomhead wears, and just like, uh, you know, you don't know if it's blood or if it's just like makeup, like red makeup, like splattered over his face, that is the Joker. I, when he came on screen, I thought, this. This is what the Joker from the Suicide Squad should have been. He's scary, he's menacing, he's literate, he's self-aware, he's filthy, he's grubby. He is completely morally bankrupt and you can't take your eyes off him. And uh, he offers, you know, whenever he's in the film, whenever he, you know, sort of stalks into frame, that is when I actually started to feel a little bit concerned for the remaining, like, characters who had been kidnapped. I just thought, okay, this is where shit actually gets real. Compared to all the other clowns in this, uh, you know, this fiasco, here's, here's another part of my criticism here. They could have gone all out with a characterization of these nut jobs, right? You have every single clown character with their own sort of thing. You have Psycho Head and, you know, a couple of other ones like Sex Head, who's like, who's like this, uh, this female serial killer sort of thing. They could have gone all out with the characterizations. It takes a lot more than a particular sort of a costume design to, to bring to you across what this character is all about. And it is such a shame that the only sort of bad guy who really makes an impression on you, who just completely embodies what their character is all about, is Doomhead. The moment he turns up, that's when you know you're in trouble. And just watching Richard Brake just beast his way through this role, I'm just like, if they make another sort of DC Batman sort of film, this guy here, this guy is the Joker. This is his audition reel. Get on this. Get on this, man, guys. R Richard Brake, he goes from Joe Chill to, like, you know, the non-Joker. What goes around comes around. It's just it's just a really stellar performance. And, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, it, it, it's cool, but it's also, like I said, a shame that it's only truly one actor who really makes this film or rather, like, elevates this film above its initial sort of, uh, you know, appearance. Um, but nevertheless, just very good. I, I really want to see Richard Brake and Mads Mikkelsen, like, face off in a cheekbone war. And I think that just, that would be, like, the best thing ever. And uh, the winner would have my tongue lapping up against it. I, I, I just... Hey, I'm talking about licking their cheekbones. I'm not talking about fucking them. I mean, what sort of degenerate do you think I am? But, <laughs> uh, no. but nevertheless, 31 is... Uh, it's a Rob Zombie movie. That's it. It is a Rob Zombie film. And uh, it's certainly not comparable to The Devil's Rejects. Let's just say that right now. The Devil's Rejects remains perhaps Zombie's best movie. It is pretty, that is the film of which pretty much all the stars aligned. And, you know, every piece of disgusting and crass and like, uh, you know, violent dialogue and, and action, that, that is when it was completely warranted. But it just seems to me that Zombie has a very particular 
comfort zone when it comes to his films. And uh, I, I'm not saying that is a bad thing, but after Lords of Salem, which for the most part I think was perhaps his most mature film to date, I really do want to see him branch out a little bit further. If he can just get rid of some of the, uh, the trash-talking characters who talk about, you know, fucking pregnant women and then talking about the best part of that being getting a blowjob from the baby, I'm just... <laughs> It, it would be nice if Zombie sort of took a couple of these notes on board, like when he made his films. But once again, I'm just a silly audience member. But for the most part, I thought 31 was okay. It, it did what it had to do, and it didn't offend me in the slightest. Um, it, it takes a lot for a film to sort of truly make me feel disgusted and not want to watch it ever, ever, ever 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 again and uh, you know 31 is not that sort of film for me um, it may be that sort of film for somebody else but if if you have uh, if you have a bit of an open mind and you don't really care about the the blood and the gore and the nonsense and all of that wonderful stuff it you'll have a good time <laughs> but uh, ultimately in the end 31 despite uh, or rather apart from your know, Richard Brakes fan fucking fantastic performance this one probably isn't going to stay with you. Um, and uh, so yeah, I give 31 perhaps a... Ooh, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Um, it, it's not horrible. It's not like Halloween 2 horrible, but it's just... It's there. It's just there. <laughs> so anyway guys, thank you so much for listening to me ramble, and as usual, I shall see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.